Okay, I'm going to introduce you to two new objects um, which will be useful to you for the coming tutorial. Um, and uh, these are function and line objects. Um, and they are useful for providing you with a means of ramping um, or uh, prov providing smooth transitions between numbers. So here we've got uh, a line object along with a bunch of other things. So on the left we've got a noise generator and that is another oscillator but it produces um, broadband noise, so white noise. And then down here we've got a multiplication object which I discussed in the previous tutorial uh, telling you that it deals with volume. And then below that we've got a send tilde and a receive tilde um, and these are ways of sending data between uh, two objects in Max without using cables. Uh, so as long as send and receive both have the same name uh, then data will be sent between them and that's quite handy because as you'll notice over here I've got another object which is also sending to the same uh, argument so this one's sending to send out, this one is sending to send out they are both being received by receive out that signal data is being received by uh, this single object here which means I can have a single volume control that controls the output from both of them neither by the way are sending anything at the moment um, so that's kind of the context uh, back to this line object so line like I said produces a ramp and it takes a simple sequence of messages in order to do that and it takes them in groups of two so here you've got where to go is the first uh, part of the message and then how long to get there as it says here so uh, line will count to one over 1000 seconds from where whatever value it's on at the moment so at the moment it's spitting out zeros um, and if you remember from a previous tutorial I talked about signal data being sent constantly so line is currently sending uh, zeros uh, 44,100 times a second but as soon as I click on this value here uh, it will start to ramp up to one uh, we can't hear it because I'm turning this level up, which would have been helpful. And then in the next message box, I've got um, zero over, sorry, go to zero over 1000 milliseconds. So I can ramp to one over 1000 milliseconds and then to zero over the same duration. Um, and that's basically it. So we have a, a way of, of automating that volume change. Um, <clears throat> the next message box I've got down here um, is slightly more complicated but basically if you ignore this zero for the minute uh, we've got groups of two again so we'll go two one over 20 milliseconds then to zero over 500 milliseconds. And the reason we've got a zero comma at the beginning is because this is a way of going to zero immediately because essentially we're going uh, zero go to zero over zero milliseconds so the second argument isn't there because we assume that it's just zero nothing so this will as it says here go from zero so it'll jump to zero first of all then it'll count to one over 20 milliseconds then go to zero over 500 milliseconds so we get a very very basic envelope and that's basically it so we could add message boxes that will, so there you go, I'm going to zero immediately, then I could count to uh, one over 500 milliseconds, then I could count to uh, 0 0.5, oops, over 200 milliseconds, then we could stay at 0 0.5 over a period of uh, one second, and then we could ramp to zero over um, let's say a longer period. All right, so this is going to <coughs> give me a slow, slow attack, going to one over 500 milliseconds. Then it's going to give me a decay to 0 0.5 over 200 milliseconds. Then remain at 0 0.5 over 1,000 milliseconds, and then go back to zero over 2,000 milliseconds. So in principle, this is—I mean—it it looks cumbersome because there's lots of numbers, uh, but in principle, it's fairly simple. So again, we'll lock the patch and try that. And it gives me an envelope. 
So that is what line is doing. As you can see it here, it's it's giving us a, a, a useful um, and efficient way of smoothing volume changes in this case. But this sequence of numbers is a bit of a pain. Uh, wouldn't it be easier to have something graphical that would help us to do that job? And as you can see over here, we have one. So this is the function object. Um, and what it does is it produces this numerical data that's being sent to the line object. So we have the same output again, so a noise and then a multiplication object and then going to send out, which is being sent to receive out over here. Um, but we have this function object, which is a breakpoint function editor fundamentally. So we have a, a point at the beginning, which is at zero. Then we have another point, which if you look at the x, y grid, uh, y is given at 1, and then x is, for some reason, at 69.149. This is because, um, and I will, I'm going to jump to the end, you'll see that x, its greatest number, i.e. the furthest right we can put a point, is at a value of 1000. Um, so, uh, so this is proportionally, um, what is it, uh, I suppose about 7% into the... Um, x-axis we get 69.1 um, and then the next one is uh, a value a y value of 0 0.4 which uh, we ramp to over 138 uh, milliseconds or at least we re reach that by 138 milliseconds um, so all we need to do in order to trigger that rather than actually clicking a message box is to click on this uh, button object and that sends a bang to function which tells it to spit out some data and notice it's coming out of the second outlet. So we have an envelope which um, sounds as it ought to according to the shape we've got um, and down here you'll see that we have um, 1, uh, go, go to 1 over 69.1x uh, milliseconds, then go to 0 0.4 over another 69.14x milliseconds, um, which is the time it takes to get from here to here, uh, and then go to 0 over 861 milliseconds. And I could add additional uh, points here, and in doing so, if I were to click this button, you'd see uh, we get, well, you can hear that it worked, but we also got a much more uh, a longer sequence of numbers um, which give us the various points we need to tell line to ramp to the various points appropriately. And that's basically it. There's a couple of other useful things about the function object um, which are, uh, well some of which I'll talk about now and some of which I won't. What I will show you is that if we uh, click on the function object and go to its inspector window um, You'll see that, well, as usual, you can change the colour and make it pretty and various other kind of standard options. Uh, but down here, it's not necessarily entirely obvious, but there's a way of changing its uh, duration. So before we said that um, our x-axis value went from 0 to 1000, we can change that by changing what's called its domain length. So I need to find uh, domain, which is here, and high domain is currently at 1000, you see. Uh, if I double click on that, then um, I can put in 2000, and that uh, scrunches the data we've already got in order to make the available space larger. So I can now increase the duration of that. So that's now two, two seconds long. Um, and I can also change the x-axis, because at the moment it goes from 0 to 1, by um, changing the range, which is, where is it? Low and high display range, it's a bit difficult to see there. Um, you can see that it's currently going from 0 to 1, but once again I can change that so that it goes, say, from 0 to 100. Now, as we've talked about before, we would be unlikely to want it to do that when we're dealing with volume, but as we'll see in the next um, video, you can use it to control other parameters as well. 
I'll be using it to uh, control an EQ, for example. Um, so I'm going to change that back for now because I don't want it at uh, 0 to 100. Um, one other thing to add about both of those parameters, uh, range and domain, is that uh, once again, when I changed them in the inspector window, we saw the display scrunch up. Um, so the size is absolute and it will change the data that's within it to accommodate the additional length. But what happens if we want to keep the shape that we've got, uh, but just change the length of the or the duration over which it happens, for example. Well, we can do that um, by sending it a message. So if I say set domain, and then I put in 2000, for example, um, and click it, then we don't see any change. But if I hover over the uh, function object, then we will see, actually if we go to the end, we'll see that uh, x is now going to 2000. Um, so we've changed the domain length, we just haven't changed the shape, which is quite helpful. And I can change it again, so it's set domain 1000, Click that again. Once again, the shape doesn't change, but we've now got a um, the x-axis is now only going to 1,000. Um, so we'll hear the difference in those two. And then if I change it back to 2,000, or maybe even 5,000. So that's fine. Um, and if uh, we can always use our old friend the dollar one in order to throughput that data more easily. So if I put in um, 1000 2000 5000 connect all those up then 1,000 will give us over one second, uh, 5,000 will give us over 5,000 milliseconds. So it's doing what we want it uh, to do. Um, we can do the same, by the way, and again, this won't be relevant until the next tutorial, um, but we could do the same with the range. So instead of changing the range in our inspector window, we can change it up here. So set range and then we have to give it a low and a high range. So here I will give it 0 to 1, but I could also do another message that would make it go from, say, 100 to 5,000. Oops. And again, if I hover over the topmost uh, nodule in here, we'll see that the Y value is at 1. If I set the range to 100 to 5,000, we'll see that the y value is now, oops, that's interesting, oh, that's why, sorry, it's because I didn't use the same, sorry, it's supposed to be all one word, so set range 0 to 1, we have y on uh, 1.0, set range 105,000, we now have y value as 5,000, and the y value at the bottom as being 100. Um, so that is uh, the line and the uh, function object, and uh, we'll see how they might be useful for enveloping um, and producing uh, some drum sounds or drum-like sounds in the next tutorial. <laughs>